Hello and welcome to your webinar on the topic, avoid additional monthly cost through efficient monitoring of machines and systems. What does it mean? Uh, in other words, what steps are necessary to monitor systems? In my opinion, there are at least two steps involved. Step one is um, data must be captured. Step two, data must be evaluated. Softing provides solutions for step one and our partner company Ecotech provides solutions for step two. I will present some products from Softing uh, that help you to do that, uh, to, to capture data from different machines. But let's start with the introduction of Softing. Softing was founded in 1979 and the headquarter is in Haar near Munich, Germany. Um, meanwhile, uh, Softing has more than 400 employees uh, around the whole world. The products are manufactured in Germany, in USA, and also in Singapore. Um, the development takes place uh, mainly in Germany, but a part of the development is located in Romania. Softing is divided in three divisions. The division one, the called Softing Automotive, provides solutions for control unit diagnostics, measurement technology, and associated communications. The second division, IT Networks, develop and sells measuring instruments for testing, qualifying, and certifying copper or fiber optic cables in IT network systems. I belong to the third um, division, industrial, Softic Industrial. Softing Industrial provide products for data acquisition from different machines or from different PLCs, such as uh, Siemens PLC or Rockwell, or also Modbus-based PLCs. Product overview. First of all, I would like to mention uh, the Softing Data Feed OPC suite. We call that all in one software solution for communication via OPC, UA, MQTT, and more. So, using this yeah, software solution or software, uh, you are able to read data from different machines and then depends on the on the client you can provide this data using the ua interface or you can send using mqtt protocol the data to um, the mqtt broker for example we call that software solution gateway to big data and iot cloud solutions the second product, Secure Integration Server, uh, provides, um, yeah, I would say, only two interfaces. Uh, the interfaces are OPC UA and MQTT. So we will have a lot of OPC, or not we, the machines uh, will have a lot of OPC UA servers in the future, and then it will be necessary to collect the data in a one software and to provide this data using OPC UA or using MQTT for the clients, for the monitoring systems. Here, I would like to mention some security uh, settings. You can send the data using user security or you can use encryption and you can also authenticate with certificate between a client and server. The next product series uh, are Docker container. If you are looking for a software solution, but uh, you prefer the latest Docker solution, so you can use 
the Softlink Docker container instead of the data feed OPC fee, but you have the same possibility to read data from different machines and to provide this data using uh, um, as mentioned OPC UA, MQTT, and also REST API. If you are looking for a hardware solution, if you are if you don't like software solutions, so Softing provides um, different gateways, and the gateways provide UA interface or MQTT interface, but it is not a solution, um, all-in-one solution. We have different gateways with different interfaces. So you have to choose, should I send the data using MQTT or UA? And then it depends also on the PLC you will read or you will, uh, yeah, you will read data from the PLC. And the last uh, product I would like to mention, um, we also provide OPC UA SDKs. What is a SDK? A SDK is for me a kind of uh, construction kit, I would say. And using the SDK, you are able to develop your our client or server, OPC UA client or OPC server. And you can also uh, use this software development kits for uh, developing of publisher and subscriber for the communication. Um, the right term is of course not a construction kit. Uh, the right term is a comprehensive collection of libraries with a comfortable programming interface. Currently, we provide OPC UA.NET standard SDK, OPC UA C++ SDK for Windows, Linux, and VX Works. That was my presentation, and now you can take over, Jan. Yes, thank you, Pavel. Um, then I will start to present uh, our company, Ökotech. Um, Ökotech is, uh, was, was founded in 1999, so now we have our 25th anniversary this year. Um, we started with technical consulting um, uh, in Ökotech, but over the time we um, we've, uh, saw that there's no specific um, software which suits our um, our necessities um, to uh, analyze the data from our clients better than just using Excel in the parse. And therefore, um, uh, 10 years ago now, um, we developed our energy efficiency controlling software, NFCO, um, which I will also present today. Uh, since 2016, we're part of uh, Veolia. Um, so um, they're the majority owner of uh, our company, so we have a strong partner in our back, um, and we're not a, a startup anymore who will maybe be gone in one or two years. I don't know. Yeah, our main perspective or our main work concerns the savings of CO2 emissions and improving energy efficiencies for our clients, either with technical um, or technical. Techno uh, technology organizational measures or uh, like I will present today with um, our technical software there. We have experience in all different uh, kinds of uh, industries and uh, commerce and uh, building management there. Uh, it doesn't depend if it's automotive, chemistry and everything. We did over 2000 projects in this time in 35 different countries. So we're not just located in Germany, we're I guess nearly in all continents we have a client already and we're a company with uh, 65 um, people and additionally 10 external employees like programmers who are also supporting us um, developing our portfolio. Um, like you see here, this is the portfolio I was mentioning. Um, today we were talking more about the green box on the right with NFCO, our energy efficiency controlling software. Um, 
with which you can monitor your energies and um, increase your en energy efficiencies, but as well you can um, monitor your CO2 footprints with P PCFs, CCFs, or you can also um, yeah, optimize your um, your control of machines inside of your plant, or you can also use an uh, our NFLEX uh, module where you can use the chances of uh, markets to uh, decrease your energy costs. The blue parts on the left, this is where we come from, the technical consulting I was starting to mention, where we go on site, help with audits, uh, proof uh, of savings with measures. Then as well in Germany, the ISO 50001 is a big topic. There we support with the energy management as well with the climate protection and energy transition. Um, we help to list this PCF CCFs and also give a transition path for the future, how you can decrease your CO2 emissions. And as well, we have networks, we, we moderate them and bring people from certain areas in Germany together or from certain industries together to have an exchange with our clients so they can also profit from their uh, from each other. And on the bottom, you can see that we also uh, work with ministries in Germany and have a research and development aspect in Ökotech where we um, also develop our portfolio there. So going on the next side, there we go to the topic of today with the dynamic system monitoring to provide unnecessary energy consumptions. And this, there we have one product in uh, our NFCO software, but here we can also see firstly, what is the benefit of our energy efficiency controlling software in NFCO and who are the stakeholders who can pro profit from it. So on the left, you can see the different stakeholders like energy manager, the production, the plant manager, um, who can all profit from the information they gain from a NEFCO, but today it's more like on the supply engineer and the energy management who will um, be the first persons to, to gain profits from this topic today with the system monitoring. But on the right, you can also see what is the different other things uh, the energy software provides. So you increase your transparency, you increase your efficiency and uh, can uh, increase as well the efficiency of your maintenance. You can reduce costs of energy and also taxes in some cases, depending on the uh, local government legislation. And you can achieve climate uh, protection targets. Like I said, you can start to monitor your CO2 reductions and you can ensure in compliance as well, like I said, with ISO 50001 in Germany, for uh, uh, example, where you can uh, provide the information, this legislation, legislation um, wants um, to have there. Yeah. So the topic for today is the statistical system monitoring with the NEFCO. You can see a first screenshot on the right. We will go into the system later on where we can then uh, have a deeper look what is shown here on the screenshot. But um, what is the the benefits of this statistical, or what is this statistical system monitoring? This is a, a dynamic live monitoring based on statistical models. So we have different three different types of models which we can use inside of a NEFCO um, where we can use these regression models to analyze historic data and give therefore a forecast what would be an expected, um, an expected consumption depending on the historic values. So therefore we can then see where are deviations uh, in the assumed consumption regarding the past or the metered consumption. This we can also, if we have for, uh, or future data like production amounts and something, depending on the influencing parameters of, the system, of this um, statistical model, we can also have a look into the future and see maybe what are the expected consumptions in the next year or something. Of course, uh, this um, statistical model needs influencing parameters. So things we want to normalize our consumption through. So nobody can say, okay, there we have an increased consumption, but this was depending on uh, on higher production. 
this this uh, arguments we will take off with our statistical models and um, we will then increase uh, or build our um, model on top of this influencing parameters which have to be analyzed in advance where NFCO can also help um, to analyze which are influencing parameters for our statistical models so we can monitor our um, production there. And when we have our model, we can also have automatic uh, alarms via email when there is a violation. So you can directly see when you don't have uh, an FCO open at one point. If there is a violation, then you will get informed and then you can go on site and uh, fix the problem there. And as well, after the proof that there was a was a measure done, so um, we can we can provide a proof of savings what was done because of the measure which was um, implemented. Yeah, what are, are the advantages of statistical machine monitoring? So we increase the efficiency uh, of energy and yeah, monitor our energy. So we provide a better transparency there. Yeah, we use for this our statistical monitoring with influencing parameters. This is a real-time optimization. So if you monitor or if you um, collect the data with directly with an EFCO or via the OPC suite or other products of Softing, there we can then collect data in real time and, and see in real time if there is like a deviation in the energy um, uh, consumption. Um, we will reduce energy costs and also operating costs and maintenance costs because we can react quicker with this if there is a deviation. And there's also legal compliance, like I said uh, earlier. Based on this um, statistical models in NFCO, we can also do benchmarks where we use the statistical models to see when we put uh, different uh, models of different uh, machines, which are maybe quite similar but one is maybe located in Germany and the one other one is in America and then we can see which one is working better or compared in the same with the same influencing parameter which would be the most uh, or the optimal use or if one of the two machines works better there. So then we can also um, increase the overall performance because we can see what is the optimal machine there, what are the settings, or do we have to change a machine there? And um, as well, re uh, regarding this, this will lead to predictive maintenance. If there is something like a um, deviation uh, in the energy consumption, we can most of the times also then see if this is a, a thing which will, which is due to uh, missing maintenance. And then we can start to maintain and don't have a long period where our efficiency is low and um, quicker um, gain the advantages there. Yeah, so this was my part for the presentation of uh, our company. And now we will go to Pavel to start the live demo and then I will come back to the demo from Nefco afterwards. So uh, let's go on with the live demo. Um, I would like to show you what you have to do if you want to read data from uh, S7 300 PLC from Siemens and to provide this data for an, using the OPC UA server for an OPC UA client such as NFCO. NFCO is also an OPC UA client and NFCO uses or read data from the OPC server uh, from the data feed suite. So we have to do following. We have to configure a connection to the S7300 PLC. We have to configure the OPC UA server. And afterwards, I will test the connection using our OPC UA client if everything is OK. So. So this is the Softing uh, Data Feed OPC suite. And we will start with the configuration of the data source. And as mentioned, it is uh, in this case, it is uh, the S7 PLC from Siemens. So you have to add 
a new connection and you can enter a name for the connection. Then uh, you have to choose the right uh, Ethernet protocol or application protocol. And uh, you have to know that the S7300 PLC provides the Siemens S7 um, protocol. So you have to use this one. If you have a PLC 1500 or 1200, the new series, so you can use or you have to use this uh, Ethernet protocol. The next step is you have to enter the IP address of the PLC and it is always helpful helpful to know the IP address. I hope this is the right IP address. Um, uh, the IP address, we can check the connection. And uh, as you can see, the connection test is successful. So my IP address is correct. The next step is uh, you have to define the address space. So you can here enter manually uh, the tags or the, the values, for example, with a name, and the right syntax such as DB2, uh, data block two, and for example, byte six. Uh, this, five, this is six. But the best way to create uh, the address page is um, if you have the S7 PLC project. So you can use that, or you can use uh, you can import the values from the S7 PLC project. And I hope I have this project. Yes, this is the project of the S7 PLC. And here I can, there is a file that I can use to import the values. Now, if necessary, you can resolve arrays. Uh, And the next steps, you can see all the data blocks um, in the SM project, but I always um, prefer or I suggest to import only the uh, data you can, oh, or not you, the OPC way uh, client use, will use. So, and I hope this data is in this data block. And now I'm finished. This is our connection to the PLC. It is still okay. And we will go to, the, to step two. I have mentioned we have to configure the OPC UA server. And this is quite easy. You have only to activate the OPC UA server in the data feed OPC seed. And uh, the only one term or the address that the client needs is the server endpoint address. And can copy that. And very important, I have to start the application. Now I will check my configuration using our test client. And as you can see, I have to uh, create a session from client to the server. And the most important information is of course the endpoint address. And now using this endpoint address, I will be successful to, uh, to connect to the OPC server. 
And here you can choose, you can see the data block, and here you can choose your desired value. For example, volume and flow. In this view, we can check if the connection is okay, the status is uh, good, and here you can see the current value in the PLC. So that was my live demo. I hope it was helpful. And now I guess, Jan, you will go on with your presentation. Yes, you can see now our NF constellation here. Uh, so in general, NFCO has a variety of different uh, interfaces already included, like CSV, OPC databases, um, web API, and different others. But um, the, the variety of the interfaces is so big that there we cannot include all of the interfaces in our system. Therefore, we use other systems like the OPC suite from, um, from Softing where we connect our uh, client then to the OPC server and collect the data from there directly. And they provide us the, the protocols which we cannot directly read like the S7 from, from Siemens. And therefore, like you see, we have a data source open here. Pavel was saying that we just need an URL. This is now a generic URL with a test server, which will connect to a data feed OPC suite. And from this, we can then create our data points, which we will use for our monitoring later on. So I will jump back to um, and part of NFCO. So NFCO in general is when you when I go here from my full screen, is is browser based. The server can be um, based uh, in the cloud or at the, at the client and then will be visualized over the browser. And in the NEFCO we have different sections where it was with the data source was here the definition section and now here where um, the data could be analyzed is the analysis section with this pie chart here and here I've already opened this analysis I was mentioning earlier. Here we have an overview of, of our statistical model there what we um, implemented into NFCO. What is uh, what are we using? Like Pavel was saying, he uh, transferred with his um, over the suite um, data of a compressed air system, and therefore we um, have electricity and compressed air, which we um, get from from a softing, and then the outside temperature, which we can get maybe from local um, um, providers in Germany, wherever weather client uh, provider which uh, where we can get the temperatures for different locations and we have a system um, developed where we can say what what one do we want to um, um, to monitor in this case it's the it's the expense the electricity which we want to monitor which we want to not exceed a certain level and therefore we will do a complete statistical model with all of the, for all of the systems and the system includes not just the expense it also includes includes the benefit which is the compressed air here which will also be an influencing factor because of course if the compressed air demand is rising the electricity consumption is rising and as well with the outside temperature um, the electricity consumption is different for different kinds of temperatures. And um, I will go how to set up this, um, this statistical model later on as well. What is the, um, what is the, um, the result of this model? We, will, we see here on the right, there we have a linear regression with a, uh, with a regression um, formula. And with the different um, influencing parameters we are using, the outside temperature and the volume, uh, the, uh, yeah, the compressed air volume. And there we can also see informations like the R square, which will tell us something about the quality of our statistical model. And if this statistical model is good, then we can be sure that if there are deviations in our consumption, then um, 
we can be sure that this deviation um, is an overconsumption and not something just because of some statistical uncertainties and something. There are further um, statistical values which uh, give information about the quality, but there I want, don't want to go uh, into deep. I will go a little bit deeper into the um, into the analysis here on the bottom. This is um, in the dashboard. We have the different informations, but I can double click to open the analysis a little bit bigger. And there we see on the bottom we see the influencing parameters we are using. So we see what was the status of these parameters for this uh, different um, time intervals. And then on top, we see a white line. This white line is our statistical model. And around this white line, there is a um, light green area. This light green area is something like a statistical uncertainty. Of course, not you in reality, you cannot have a 100% perfect model of your system there and um, therefore we have this light green area where we can say if this light green area is small like here then the statistic the, um, the, the quality of the statistical model will be really good and then we have here a black line and this black line is the metered um, consumption of our system we see here it's uh, always a little bit below the white line here sometimes even below the light green area. So here it's getting even a little dark green. So this is a, a, a saving. And here then on eight o'clock on the 28th of August, we see that um, the black line exceeds um, the light green area. And we see that there was a higher consumption um, in this, um, in this period than, accepted, uh, than expected because um, we have a statistical model set with a reference period here um, of, um, of uh, half a year here in 2016. And with this um, statistical model, we expect the white value and the deviation is an overconsumption here. We see that this overconsumption, this red area, we can also include in, into an FCO this alarm messages, what I was telling earlier with an email. So you directly know that something happened and then you can go maybe to the, to the system and change maybe some settings or change some parts. So the deviation will get back to normal again, like it was done here. And if you have here over consumptions, you can also, um, multiply them with um, CO2 emission factors or prices to directly see what was this um, overconsumption costing me. And therefore I can go here and activate a formula I implemented where I multiplied this deviation with a, um, with a um, price for electricity. And then I have here on, this, uh, on the third graph, I have the cost for each interval where how much I spend for this overconsumption. And when I was would expecting, normally it takes me to find something like this without monitoring in good cases, one or two days, in some cases, maybe two, three weeks, two months. Then I could multiply these days with the amount of, um, of euro in this case, um, what I was spending more in this period where the overconsumption took place. And um, I want to show again as well um, how to set up this statistical model. So therefore I go back to the definition section and um, there inside of the electricity data point, I can set up uh, this statistical model. There in general for the first um, setup, you can always get more fine in afterwards. You just have to check um, what is the base time I want to um, have my model on and what are my influencing parameters. With these two informations in, in FCO you can also do scatter plots where you can see what settings you have to do here or what are, are reasonable settings here regarding base time and what are influencing parameters. After that, this influencing parameters you can also just drag and drop inside um, inside here, so it will add to the statistical model. Then we have here our three different models, which we can select depending 
on um, yeah on the correlation of the data depends which uh, type of model you want to use or as well some kind of linear regression is always easier to understand like other models and um, therefore sometimes this is the best option there and then you just have to define a reference time period in this reference time period um, you uh, want to integrate all of the possi possible statuses of of your influencing parameters and your um, and your metered uh, value for instance like the outside temperature you always want to have at least half a year where you have outside temperature with cold areas and outside temperature with hot uh, intervals so you can always give a, a metered correlation there and don't have to be uh, interpolating from the from the uh, model there so this one two three settings are or four settings with the model selection are the base setups what you do here this is uh, in general really easy you as, as i told have to analyze a little bit in advance and after that if the quality is not good enough after this first four steps you can also define uh, further um, further informations here like uh, quality of the data you want to use or maybe in your reference time period you want to exclude some time periods this you can set up afterwards to increase the quality of your um of your model further then yeah so um this was in general the, the presentation for the nefco part to see um here how the qual the model was done when you have this model you can also visualize it inside of this uh, traffic lights here on the right where you have different aggregations for one day or uh, seven days or last month when I deactivate it, you can maybe see it better. Um, that if there is an overconsumption, then the filling will um, get higher. And this traffic lights you can also use in dashboards, which will have a complete overview, maybe for a site manager or something. And then you can see first uh, how is the traffic light and if something is going yellow or red you can directly go back to more precise analysis like i was showing earlier yeah so this was the presentation of nefco and now we will start with the q a section so the question is, you know, is it the same way, is the S7200 connected in the same way that you would connect the S7300? Um, yes, you have also to define the IP address. Uh, maybe you have to modify the uh, the services and the uh, rack and slot. In other words, you have to uh, use the right T-subs for the RFC one uh, 1006 protocol um, regarding the project it is not possible to import the the, um, the values from the s7200 uh, project i'm sorry okay so that answers that question then um also towards softing uh, you mentioned uh pavel that the data feed opc suite can collect data from rockwell controllers earlier during the presentation uh, could you specify which controllers those would be exactly um okay also this i can show you here in the uh, configuration um after um Using this button, you can define a new connection to the S, uh, not the S7, to Rockwell PLCs. And how you can see, you we are able to connect to compact logics and control logics, but also the yeah, old kind of PLC, uh, SES and PLC5. Okay, great. Again, from Norman Danish, how many tags can we read in NFCO? And what about the license part? 
Um, yeah, so um, the amount of tags um, were not that limited. So we have installations where we have over 100,000 tags in one installation, but as well, it could be separated. Uh, the license part is um, also based on the uh, on the data basis, so uh, on the data data points. So in general, in an EFCO, you have uh, like here for the example, the compressed air. There's one electricity meter and one uh, flow meter, and this would be like two license data points. But with these two license data points, you can later on do calculations like aggregate together calculated data points if you have more systems you can do a sum or different other um, if clauses and everything and this will not be part of licenses so it's just the directly metered values which you want to visualize in the NEFCO which are based on licenses or which will take on licenses and after that the calculations what you do with the data points after that will not be licensed by NEFCO. Good. So it seems there are no further questions. Um, so I really do want to thank you, Jan, for your time, for your efforts. Same goes to Pavel. Have a good rest of the week.